Welcome everyone back to Cat's Eye on the Future. I hope everyone enjoyed last week's spooky show with Gavelda for Gunderson. If you missed it, you can still find it right there in the archives on Time Monk Radio's YouTube page, and it's a show you really don't want to miss. Now this week's show is another peek at what the cards and runes suggest are in store for us this coming week. Before getting on with the show, I'd like to thank my listeners at Time Monk Radio, the Heathen Radio Network, and the UK Pagan Network, plus everyone who goes and listens to me via the YouTube archives. Welcome back, and now it's time to settle into our virtual reading room, that place where the chair is always soft, the fire in the hearth is always warm, and the tea is just the way you like it. We'll return to the reading room for our reading right after these short messages. All the music used on the show today is from MusicAlley.com, your source for free-to-air music for podcasts. The artists place their music up for free-to-air in hopes that you, the listener, will visit their site and purchase some of their outstanding musical offerings. So after the show, why not visit MusicAlley.com and explore their extensive playlist? Do you have questions? The cards have answers. If you would like a personal reading with Melody, just go to my website, MelodyPsychicReadings.com. That's Melody with an I, PsychicReadings.com, for information. Or email me at MelodyReader at gmail.com. Readings are available using Skype, phone, email, or even in person if you are lucky to live in Ireland. Why not find out what special messages the cards have just for you and book a private reading today? Welcome everyone, back to the show. Now this week, I asked the question this way. What are the most important energies or events coming up for the week November 11th through November 17th, 2013? Now the first thing we notice about this week's card spread, that again, you can see this at home if you want to go to my website, the cards will be up there, just look up the ones for this episode. But you'll notice that, once again, we have some really major issues being flagged, especially on the first, third, and final cards. We've talked about that pattern before, how very often the first card sets the tone for the entire reading, and that's pretty much true in any reading with over more than one card. But in a five-card reading, the middle and the last card tend to define and frame it. You, You have sort of those two middle cards influencing things, but the three cards, the beginning, middle, and end, are really the ones that often tend to flag the issues. We'll get back to that in a moment, but first let's just look at the very first card, the one that will influence all the rest of the reading, and likely will be the main theme of this week ahead. Now that card is Peace. The Peace card is a lovely cathedral with stained glass windows spreading colorful sunlight across the floor, and great pillars that hold up the arches. This is a fantastic card to start off the week with even if some of the questions around it may be difficult. The concept of the peace card itself, with its serenity, inner harmony, cessation of conflict, it's a sort of magical energy that just really shouldn't be ignored. Especially for individuals, this week is one where it may very well be possible to find a lot of personal options opening up when it comes to things like meditation, the ending of long-standing life conflicts, Even, you know, conflicts within yourself, but also with other people. This is a really good week for peacemaking and negotiation. And we'll hope that follows through into current events. But in a mostly current events reading, there is also this suggestion that the question of peace, or the idea of peace, as well as the actual existence of peace, is going to be the hot-button issue for the week ahead. With peace talks that are already ongoing today uh, between the U.S. and Iran, Uh, nuclear issues on November 8th, and also rumors of possible 
forced negotiations between Israel and Palestine with the U.S. possibly having some sort of possible peace treaty they want to bring to the table there. We know the topic of peace is already part of this agenda, even before the time period this reading is really intended to cover. It's happening now on Friday, November 8th. It looks like the subject's only going to increase in focus over the weekend, and to become possibly very urgent and important in the following few days, which is when this reading is covering. Why is it so urgent, important, or even faded, perhaps? I mean, we've had the peace card before. Why is it suddenly flagging this way? Well, because the next card in the deck is the Wheel of Fortune, Fate and Changes. This card suggests that a time period or a topic is faded, or soon to be part of the cycles of history. It really makes a strong case that whatever is happening in regards to peace this week will be very important in the long term of, of humanity, or at least how things play out from this point forward. In other words, it's another one of those tipping points we've talked about. So this card acts as a kind of marker saying, pay attention. This is something that has either happened before, because it's a cycle. It may happen again, repeating itself, or perhaps it's simply setting a new cycle in motion. But whatever it is, it's, it's something that's very profound. It's not something to ignore. Much depends, then, probably on what occurs this week, especially in terms of peace and war. Now, why do I say that about war? After all, the peace card can be about a lot of things, including sometimes the card just means nothing much is happening. That's when the card pretty much just means stasis or something being flat. No conflict, but nothing going on either. And sometimes you really do want a break from signs and portents and really heavy stuff. Sadly, the Wheel of Fortune card already suggests that this week is not going to give us that kind of break. Instead, after the Wheel, we have the Warrior card. We've seen the Warrior card before in the show. We know he's a strong knight dressed in armor and standing sword ready. It's pointed downward. He's in defensive position and he's guarding a medieval military camp. The Warrior's not actively fighting, but he's just waiting and watching in case he has to, either in defense or because he's ordered into an offensive position. I've mentioned in the past that this card could also be, it could be about real soldiers, the military, a strong personality, male or female, someone with that kind of warrior energy. It doesn't even have to be, you know, like real, like physical combat. It could be someone with a great cause or something that they're really fighting for. In a private reading, it's often the man in a relationship, occasionally the woman. It can be a person or even nations with that inner warrior strength that I mentioned before. But it can also be just about plain old-fashioned wars, conflicts, and battles. Now, some of the battles may be with guns and ammo. Some may be more like diplomacy, which is war by other means. Or it can either be something on the athletic playing field, games, riddles, even, you know, heated conversation arguments, but it's just conflict. So at this point, we have car the cards Peace, Fate, and War, which I think pretty much tell us what the focal issues of this week are going to be. Even though they're not quite in that beginning, middle, end, they are still, they make a, a really strong triad that the other cards in rooms just seem to be shedding a bit more light on. The next card in the series is the stars which is all about making connections, funny enough. Having understanding, linking the stars link things together, some of which really are linked, or sometimes it, the energy helps people mistake things as being connected when they're really not. To me, this card suggests that there's going to be a lot of talk this week about connections, assumptions, and links to various things. This is especially likely in terms of war, peace, alliances, diplomacies, ties, espionage, battle plans, corporate mergers, corp you know, business dealings, you name it. Some of these connections will be real, and some of them will be kind of fuzzy and out there, and some of them will really be completely wacky. And a few of them will just be plain wrong. But they will all be out there crying for attention and making it very difficult for the average person and perhaps even some of the major players in these events, to see what's really happening. Because, as I said, some of the connections are likely to be real, some of them kind of wonky and sideways, and some of them just 
gone. I mean, they're just, they really don't lead where you think they lead, except down a really narrow alley and probably right out the wrong door. It's very important, though, that serious attempts are made to sort out the facts from the fuzzy and the delusional, because the tree card finishes off our cards for this week. Now, that's the card of the strong tree, the world tree. It suggests the very root of problems, or the putting down of roots of something new that's beginning, or the continuing to growth of something that's already established. It's a really powerful and very strong card. It's also a unifier card. In the Norse tradition, the world tree brings all the nine worlds together, and it's what connects them. And so this is a really, you know, this suggests that whatever is going on, it's very important. Now, if the world's really lucky, it may be possible this week to increase the chances for peace, or at least lowering the threat of major conflict for a little while. Wouldn't that be wonderful? It could, this could be done by making proper and correct connections, even assumptions, but result in connections, between the reasons for the various conflicts going on and seriously working and diligently trying to seek ways of resolving them. The warrior then becomes the protector and guardian rather than the offensive weapon or even the defensive fighter who has to respond because that's what he's trained to do is to protect. If things are resolved at the basic level, the problems go away, then peace can return, and you do get stasis for a while. It's not going to stay forever. Peace never does. But at least it, it calms down this current situation. However, if that doesn't happen, the card suggests this is a time when the cycles of the wheel are likely to turn peace into war, and that could shake the very foundations of the world trade. Or to put it another way, war or conflict could affect the world we live in. There are two further choices that influence this that occur in the runes. The first rune we see is an interesting rune. It's usually translated joy. But it can also mean battle flag and sometimes even the clan banner or family banner. This seemingly strange combination of images makes sense when you think of the earlier context of, of the world which the, the runes come from, that early Germanic sort of Iron Age world where joy in battle is something which, you know, was, was a very popular theme. You know, the idea even of the, the berserker who goes crazy because he's not exactly having a good time, but he's overcome with battle, battle lust or battle fury and, and that kind of joy of swinging your sword and going after your enemies. That's really pretty foreign for most of us in the modern world to understand, but it's an important image in understanding the runes. So yes, we have joy, but joy is sometimes associated with actual warfare. Uh, the Germanic people also really enjoyed other more regulated forms of conflict. They had an awful lot of games and competition. They were, you know, they would have foot races. They would have riddle games. But it was a great deal about joy in, in basically, particularly for men, I think, comparing strength. And I don't know as much about women in that regard, but, but generally the, the Germanic people were known for this sort of like competition and play, often within the family or the clan or between rival clans as well. So again, you have choices here. Will the joy be be battled be from battles won, or will it be expressed with games and riddles? Perhaps we'll have boasting at feasts or the running of foot races. Maybe a more modern context would be you know lots of uh, energy around a big soccer match or even a diplomatic session that gets kind of heated words at the UN, but may actually even resolve something. Or will the joy in battle become more serious? possibly more deadly, even verbal barbs becoming worryingly strong and serve with the intention of creating trouble or even chaos? Will they shake the world tree rather than support it? Maybe even cut off a few branches and threaten the roots? We don't know, because the energy is out there for either of them. But what we do know is we don't know a lot of things. I don't mean to sound again like a really silly you know, a spokesman for an administration once who said, we have known knowns and unknown knowns. But unfortunately, the final ring just sort of hit in that sort of situation. Because what we got for the last ring is luggage, the lake. Water, depth, and hidden things coming up, bubbling to the surface, suggest an undercurrent is going on below all the events 
that may be happening. All those connections, all those battles, all that seeming stuff going on. There's stuff even further down going on underneath that that's influencing it in ways that the average person is just likely to be totally unaware of, at least at first. And just like before also, the, re the people involved may even not know all of the undercurrents that are actually there. This is addition to the ones that are on the surface and everybody can see and is trying to connect. These are the deeper hidden ones. Lock is just like the moon card. It's about water, dreams, illusions. And even sometimes madness or lunacy. It can be highly creative, but it can also be very difficult to stop. If the water starts flowing in one direction and you want to divert it to another, you have to do a lot of construction, a lot of thinking, a lot of planning to make it move. There can also be great depth to water that looks shallow, and shallow water may still hide dangers that are still that are difficult to see. Anyone who grows up in areas prone to flooding knows you never drive into a pool of standing water on the road, unless you know that road really, really, really well. And even then, caution is really advised. Because sometimes that water is a lot deeper than you think it is. When I was a child in California, a very elderly couple that were very lucky were pulled out of a shallow-looking pool of water that they tried to drive their car across. This turned out to be a dip about 10 feet deep. I will never forget the husband turning to his wife as they were rescued, and he was caught on camera saying, You were right, dear. It is deeper than it looks. I get the feeling that this coming week is all about things being deeper than they look. So try to avoid making decisions on things based on just what you see on the surface. This is in all aspects of life, especially politics and current events, but general life as well. Things that look peaceful and calm on the outside may be seriously distorted and worrying on the inside. Whereas things that may look to you really warlike and scary on the surface may turn out to be more benign after all. The problem is you won't know for sure until those things have a little time to play out and the things that are marked out for you, that Wujo banner, have time to reveal their hidden qualities. So again, it is a time when conflicts and peace can be made, especially in your personal life, but give it a little time before jumping in to try to solve things. Again, this week may be great for individuals, as you have the high powers of both peace and defensive energy pretty much there at your beck and call. I mean, it's there for you to draw on if you choose to use it that way. So again, it's a great time for meditation, things like defensive warding. If you are moving into a new house, it's a great time for cleaning it out magically. If you had to do something like, you know, I don't recommend ghost busting, but if you're having problems with the other world or whatever, this is a great time for protection. And, you know, it's also a good time for studying because it's the stars are there to help you make connections. Astronomy should be maybe in the news this week. Both pers you know, your stargazer, great time to go out and look around. Also pay attention to the news about uh, astronomy as well. Gardening because of the tree and also plants, life, energy, the world in general, family gatherings from the clan banner. And with the tree and clan energy together, you could even get some really joyful family celebrations. It's not quite time for that yet in, a, in North America traditionally, but we're running into that season. So the beginning of that kind of stuff can start going on. That's the most obvious reading of the joy rune this week, I think, for, for regular people, is hopefully it will result in, in good things and, and good uh, good interactions. But overall, I know I keep saying this is the week to watch, but I think that is because we've been living through a rather bumpy and faded time period, really since I started doing the show, and particularly over the last few months, where little decisions here and there start to add up to major and full-blown situations that are coming over the next hill. The wheel card suggests that this is another such really faded week, with both peace and war being held sort of in the balance. So that's another kind of heavy reading to leave you with. There won't be a personal reading today, but if you've got questions you would like me to look at here on the show, please just send them to me at melodyreader at gmail.com. What questions could be either personal or involve current events you'd like to know about, and I'll be happy to extend the show and we could do some more readings in the future. But I think for now, for this week's show, that's about all, and I'll see you again 
next time for Cat's Eye on the Future. But here's a health to the company and one to my last. You have been listening to Cat's Eye on the Future, the show where we take a glimpse of the energies coming soon into your world and into your future. Be sure to join us again next time when we explore another chapter of Cat's Eye on the Future. Let's drink and be merry, all grief to refrain. For